we're going to go straight to the last presenter uh, who is going to present on, you know, it's very interesting topic. Relevance of self-packaging and CV composition in the competitive interviewing process. And I am delighted to bring on, on the stage my good friend, uh, uh, Moses, who is currently working at Stambik Uganda Holdings Limited as the general manager. Mo Moses holds Masters of Business Administration from Edinburgh Business School, ha uh, Harriet Wet University. He has over 17 years of experience from working with various companies, including Bat Uganda and Centena Century Bottling Company. He is also the current president of the Human Resource Managers Association of Uganda. Yes, so uh, around self -pack packaging, I kind of um, understood this to be way more than your dressing. So it is how it's everything about you, how you interact with the people, the confidence. City. And of course, we meet um, as an undergraduate, you meet so many people. This could be your potential um, recruiters. And on the D day, you ought to be a little more, more, um, more than you, how you've dressed to be able to make uh, a first impression. I read it somewhere that it just takes seven seconds for somebody to make up their mind whether they are going to interact with you or not. And that is pretty, pretty short. So, you know, CV is simply a Latin word about course of life. And we all know, you know, it's, it's a written overview of someone's life, life's work. And um, it's a document that we normally use to have uh, a view of your career and could be quite extensive. But an analogy I want to bring to the table here is your CV is a marketing document. You are selling a product to a customer. Interestingly, you are the product and the customer is the employer. And uh, somebody would say, you know, I've not been into sales and marketing. Um, you know, I've uh, just finished university. Uh, so how do I understand this? But, you know, all of us from a very pretty young age are involved in some uh, sales and marketing exercise. Either you're going to buy something at the shop or somebody is convincing you to buy something. Uh, it could be at school. It could be at home. It could be in the community. So if you want to effectively sell anything to anyone, you have to feel like them, think like them, and be them in that moment. So my analogy here is... Um, People need to approach the CV as something that is going to sell them. I've come across quite uh, so many CVs, some of them very long, 12 pages, um, others quite straight to the point. They are two pages and quite impressive. Others poorly written with very poor English and, uh, you know, grammatical errors, uh, no formatting. And people are quite confident that they're actually sending it to somebody who will actually be able to, to buy them off the, off the labor market. And that, that can, can be really, really shocking. So how, do you, how are you able to stand out from the millions or hundreds of CVs that are flying around? And therefore, it takes me to another point that you need to note. So many of us um, you know, are quite busy in this trade of, of human resources. So we just have a very short time to be able to um, catch someone that, I mean, I mean, be able to, uh, for someone to be able to take our attention. So as an applicant, you have very little, limited time and you have very limited time to make sure that you make that first impression of seven seconds. You've got to overthink uh, or outthink everyone. And you've got to be in the market, like I say, the marketing document. You must be, you must have a view that you're competing with thousands of people. And uh, you need to understand that your CV needs to be, you need to be selling um, to them the benefits. You need to be talking about the benefits, not about the features. And this is where it becomes quite interesting. Um, the, employee, the employer has this in my, in, on top of his or her mind. How do those things that you've written in the CV add value to them as the employers or to the organization? And that's why we need to keep asking yourself the so what question. How are you going to make my business more profitable? And I think I logged in when um, um, uh, 
another Emma was speaking, uh, my colleague from Stanbic Bank, and uh, she made an analogy of, you know, you are, you are passionate about football, so what, you know? Uh, how does, how do you, instead of you telling me about football, how does that passion translate into you being uh, a passionate person about things that you care and how would that add value for my business? So we, we keep, uh, we throw about jargons like, you know, I'm a team player, you know, I'm good with people. And then you fail to articulate exactly how that will benefit the person in front of you or the person looking at your CV. And uh, sometimes that, that typically undersells us because we believe that, you know, listing, you know, uh, the qualifications that we have uh, acquired over time, listing the different uh, uh, skills that we actually have acquired over time, uh, also listing our experience. And when you talk about, you know, somebody putting together experience on their CV, again, ask yourself the question, if you have been managing a team of maybe 12 people, 20 people, and you're quite so proud about it, ask yourself the question, so what in light of the new employer, new prospective employer, how are you going to add value to them? Because yes, that is in the past. And quickly, uh, when you run into uh, what a typical CV would look like, this becomes quite interesting in today's uh, uh, times because um, I mean, 20 years ago, yeah, you know, we, all, we, all we needed to do is put a date of birth there, you know, uh, there weren't even, um, you know, telecoms had just arrived in the country, I'm speaking about Uganda, and some, some had phone numbers, others didn't have, <laughs> even emails was an issue. So people had to put physical addresses, and you know, typical physical addresses, you know, you don't have a post, of, post office address, so you look for your uncle, your auntie, you say, care of Emma. So if you are looking for me, you can call Emma. Today, there is another dynamic. Do you have a social media presence? And one of the speakers spoke, uh, spoke about, you know, how do you build your profile on social media? And of course, you know, we all know LinkedIn, um, of course, Facebook, Twitter, other sharp young, young men and women actually have blogs. Now, having a positive outlook outside there is very important, very, very important. We are seeing, uh, we are seeing interesting cases, um, and I will share this uh, from a neighboring country where one of, uh, um, one of, the, one of the top uh, managers, I think uh, the lady was running for uh, office, was nominated to, to go and lead uh, I think a wildlife authority of that country. And um, interestingly, social media doesn't sleep. So she had just, I, I think about five years ago, she had gotten into a, a raging battle with uh, the wildlife authority back then and said very unfriendly stuff around the, the, the authority. And guess what? That was plucked out of its uh, wardrobes and thrown back on the social media. And I can tell you that she actually did not get the job because she was so embarrassed by what she had spoken about the organization back then. And now she was vying to lead the same organization. Now, again, to the young tax, is, are your social media, you know, is your social media presence full of uh, photos that you will not be able to share with your prospective employer, for example? Or is it about uh, you, you've been engaged in uh, social media bullying and you possibly, you, you just don't know that fate has brought you again to the organization that you actually was bullying a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago because you're just a student and you said very unfriendly stuff. So having a positive outlook there is very important and it actually adds a lot of um, it is very advantageous actually to be able to quote your social media presence as long as you're confident about it because the employers are looking for human beings. They want to know what are those things that you're passionate about. What are those things that keep you awake? What are those things that they don't know and they could be able to know them uh, in that very short time? And when you come to personal statement, uh, we have those very generic statements. 
and I'm just calling out that you know you should be able to have a unique selling point. Can be short, sharp, full of impact, concise and authentic. It should also be a statement that you craft when you're thinking about the prospective employer who's going to get your CV. It can't be a generic statement that you keep uh, churning out for every other CV. It has to be tailor-made. And guess what? If you have uh, very powerful people like uh, Emma here, you can ask, you can ask for uh, an endorsement from them and you can quote it because if you know that Emma actually does know uh, Herbert and Herbert is the one recruiting, you, it would be advantageous to get a quote from Emma about your capability and your, how he views or how he has interacted with you. That could come in uh, quite handy. And of course, we all know, you know, what do we need to put there to confirm that we went to school and, you know, what to dwell much on that. Uh, an interesting one is, you know, the work experience. And again, demonstrate how your previous experience can add value and benefit the company you're applying for. You know, it's not about you talking about your achievements and your successes. You have to quantify them. And, you know, the most uh, very delicate space that we normally have is in case you've been able to have career breaks for whatever reason, uh, you know, it would be good that, you know, you are able to explain those gaps. Some of them might be quite unfortunate, but uh, just mark, mark my word, somebody will pick them up and say, we don't see this, this year or the other year or a couple of months between this job and that job. So be on hand to be able to explain that. Interests and hobbies, again, are things that we add to, the, to, 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 the, to our CVs. And guess what? Sometimes uh, the prospective employer actually uh, is not very interested in some of those things. But for example, if you say you run marathons every year and that allows you to push yourself to the very best that you can be, Again, uh, can you wing that into the mind of the prospective employer to indicate that this is a very good attribute that you will bring to the organization uh, if you're selected because you are always pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So, so that the employer gets to know that, you know, if this guy gets a job, this is a guy who has, uh, for lack of a better word, you know, stamina and he's, he's really, really focused. Uh, references are quite good. Avoid the word that, you know, you provide references on requests because that request will never come and they'll just leave you out of the race. And there are also a couple of different types of CVs and, uh, you know, um, there are functional skill-based CVs. You know, uh, these might be the, the, the real ones we normally come up with, you know, you know, um, then you know, uh, there are those that we call academic CVs um, for people going into uh, the world of academia. You may have to showcase your research activities. Um, then uh, there's also another format, you know, different formats. An interesting one I've come across is infographic. Uh, you know, as long as it is able to tell a comparing story, uh, they're quite very interesting to look at. They are very colorful and possibly that might get you into the door. But it, a word of caution here, uh, I don't think um, you should be able to, um, you know, it, it has to be tailored to the relevant um, kind of job. So if, if I'm going to be hiring uh, a CEO, I'll expect in my mind, for lack of a better word, there are a bit of prejudices that I would expect that, you know, possibly it's gonna be a three page CV, uh, well written, well formatted. And it, it has to tell me that the guy I'm actually hiring is a top guy. Um, if I'm going to be hiring a graphic designer and he shows up with a, a 10 page uh, CV, then there's also a problem there. But if he shows up with an infographic, then it will be spot on. Uh, I will be just, uh, you know, the guy will be actually on the money. Um, lastly, which we don't do quite well is proofreading our CV. So word of caution here, never write it and send it immediately. Pause and possibly give it another day or two days. 
and also share it with a colleague who can read it uh, like a person reading a newspaper so that he's able to pick up a, a couple of things. Pay attention to your formatting style. Make sure that it's consistent, not different sizes, font sizes and font types, because that is really a turn off. Uh, your CV is not a JD. It's a document that highlights your key achievements and constantly show your value to the prospective employer. Also be aware of the different CV types. I've just spoken about that. You know, some of them may not suit the type or industry that you're applying to. If it is, you know, a media industry, very graphic, uh, art and, uh, you know, you know, infographics might work, but imagine you're sending that to a bank and, you know, they're a bit, a bit, they are still a bit traditional, but they possibly will get out of that space very soon. Uh, they would like to see well-formatted, you know, kind of CV, three pages, and it is to the point. Remember, remember, it is a marketing document. Just picture it yourself that, you know, if, if this was to be the document available and it does play the same role about you in your absence, would they be impressed about it? Would they be quite switched on about it? Or they will be completely shocked and, you know, instead of looking forward to see you uh, with pleasure, they might be wondering who the hell is this person? And can we see how the fella actually looks like? You know, you can't, you know, it has grammatical errors. It is not formatted. And, you know, they might be wondering. So we want to see how he actually looks like. So if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you, Emma.